literature review, you will see more, uh, understand why is a key element in uh, proposal writing. Literature review, what is literature review? It is an important component of a research proposal and the research process. It shouldn't be overlooked in any form at all. Um, and it's often frequently, it means the difference between a focused, thorough and well-designed study and one that is fragmented, incomplete and poorly planned. Uh, by that, I mean that uh, literature review um, gives you a lot of basis for, gives body and shape to your research uh, proposal. Definition of uh, literature. Literature is all written sources relevant to the topic of interest. So it's not restricted to any, any field of uh, endeavor. And, uh, and literature review is an organized written presentation of what has been published on a topic by scholars. It involves finding, reading, understanding, I will need to mark understanding uh, because uh, not understanding is usually the thin line being uh, of uh, plagiarizing and uh, not plagiarizing or giving a, a defined focus to your research proposal and forming conclusions about the published research and theory as well as presenting it in an organized manner. When do we do literature review? That's a key question that people ask. Uh, when do we do it? Of course, it's at the onset. Before, if you have an idea, what you, do you do? You now want to gather uh, literature on what has been written about that area, what has been done, what is the current situation, what? And it extends to the final phase of your work, of your research uh, writing, uh, proposal writing. So it's from the beginning. Remember, it's just all part. It doesn't stop. It stops on. Uh, it doesn't stop. It can even extend to methods because it's reading, doing literature review that you get methods of how people are doing their work, how they did their work, and new ways. Some of the challenges that you want to either innovate on or change or try to see if there are new, better ways of doing that you can get that and it extends uh, throughout. And uh, so we may ask what are, what's the purpose of literature review? Uh, to conduct a critical analytical appraisal of recent scholarly work on the topic, stroke obtaining a comprehensive picture of the state of knowledge, a comprehensive picture of the state of knowledge uh, that is important. You see what we you conduct critical, analytical appraisal. You just you get the topic, you look at it, you look at diff, diverse uh, scholarly work around that, and then come come out with a comprehensive picture. And emphasis is on recent. You know, I was presenting the last time. You don't just go and stick to a very ancient um, uh, work. Uh, we know that there are uh, ones that are landmark that we we'll keep mentioning, but we need to also build on current things to see how we have evolved, how we have uh, moved from one state to another, uh, other methods. It is also one of the purposes too, is to identify the research problem and refine the research question. Those things, they help. It's also to place the study in context. Remember when Professor Sonja was saying, say it must be placed your research is not going to, if it's haphazard, it must be coherent. That's why you must place them in the proper context. You know, you must, both in settings and in the subject matter proper. Uh, it, it, it's also, uh, it gives you a major clue to methodology, had area and instruments to use. That's the key one. It runs down through, you know, it will help you shape your hypothesis 
you know, because it, it will help you your design because you, you may be looking, it will also help you in data analysis process because part of what you may, the gap you may be filling in a research process may be to find a better way of um, uh, designing your work. You have, you know, a, a different way from the other one that may improve uh, getting results or getting addressing a particular situation. You can also get that the purpose may be to compare the findings of existing studies and those of the study you, know, you want to get. So this is what uh, uh, you et al. got in this their work using this particular method. Uh, if I use the same method, I will now be able to now compare the gods uh, X, Y, Z, and now I'm working on my own result when I finish, got uh, UVW. So that's kind of, you can make comparisons. It's very, and remember it's central to your discussion when you will ultimately finish and you are doing reports or doing discussion in uh, a journal. It gives you that frame of uh, purpose to compare findings, your own findings against the previously written things, scholarly work in that particular area. Uh, it could also inform or support a qualitative study, uh, you know, in various forms. Uh, so let's look at important functions of literature review. It ensures you are not reinventing the wheel. Uh, because remember, we when we said research, research, the art of research and the science of research. And I told you that it gives, uh, it builds on previous work. And where you get that idea of the science behind it is the literature review. You are not reinventing the wheel, so to speak. You are giving a clear uh, a meaning to moving forward of a particular of uh, a particular uh, work you are doing. gives It gives credit to those who have laid the groundwork for research, and that's where some people make mistake. They form ideas and write. Do the poor? They do poor re literature review, and then. They do poor literature review and don't acknowledge the sources and act as if it's their own, it's their own um, uh, idea. And that's where they run the risk of um, plagiarism, uh, which carries a very steep penalty, especially in the research world. Uh, so it also demonstrates the knowledge of the research problem. That's what your literature review. And remember, for people that don't know, the in some proposal format, research proposal format, the literature review is distinct, but in some cases it may be embedded in your introduction or your background information section. So just note that some format may not bring literature review as part of their format, but what uh, introduction and background information contains are mainly literature review, pointing to the view, bringing out of them. It also demonstrates your understanding of the theoretical and research issues related to your research question. That is very clear, uh, you know, because you need You need to uh, bring uh, demonstrate that uh, understanding. Other important function is to show shows ability, your ability to critically evaluate relevant literature information. Uh, some people are not able. Remember that you need to read and understand and evaluate how relevant that literature is to. That's why in, in true sense, it is not just called literature review, it's review of related, related or relevant literature. 
Uh, you can be doing literature in, a, for instance, uh, in um, uh, poultry farming, and you are bringing uh, how to cure, uh, uh, how to how to do uh, maybe build an aircraft in in that kind of project. It means is that you are reviewing that part. It doesn't connect. So you must have the understanding that the bottom line is that the literature you are trying to review must be relevant to your research idea and must be related to your research idea. Uh, it also shows your ability to integrate and synthesize existing literature. And of course, it provides theoretical insights. We have repeated some of these things. And again, remember is a proposal, is a proposal you are trying to present. Remember what we said said about branding your product. You need to, is in, at this point, you are trying to convince your reader or the people that will eventually review your, your work that uh, your research will make a significant uh, impact or will address some of their own concerns or some of the maybe parts of uh, solving a problem. Some of the existing uh, specific aims of uh, literature review, although it depends on uh, the researcher, but in general is to acquire knowledge on the topic because it gives you, if you, are, if you just have idea, somebody comes up with idea, you just say, you don't know what the topic says. You need to know what, especially in the sciences, you want to know uh, what are the uh, causes of a particular disease. Uh, you know, where, what happens, what's the breeding site, several things you can. You can also use that to critique um, existing practices or methods, that's what, several things. You can develop research-based protocols and intervention, that's what it will help you. Because when you read literature, it will now say, oh, let me, uh, based on what they used before, I will use this and go on. You can also use that literature. Their aim is to develop policy statement or curricula or practice guidelines. Those things can help in getting that through. What are the types of information that you can get um, when you are trying to do uh, literature? They include facts, statistics, and research findings. Most important types of information help to suggest topics, conceptualizing and designing new research. Remember for when you are doing, you want to know how many people are affected. There should be statistics showing, for instance, uh, using the cholera thing I said, you need to give the people um, impression of the, 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 the burden of the cholera in the community you are trying to plan your intervention or your research uh, about. So it gives you that. Um, it also brings out theories, uh, their interpretation. They are also useful, that's the kind. It will also, you may be looking at when you are reviewing literature, methods and procedures. I've said that we can't overemphasize that. You know, you want to know methods. You know, before people that are in terms of taking temperature, temperature me measurement, you may use uh, the inner parts, you may use uh, different uh, parts. And now we have the digital uh, thermometers, temperature thermometers that you can easily, you don't stay. And this were, you know, reinvented due to all these pandemic infectious diseases so that people don't get to touch people. So you see how we have moved in that, in terms of, uh, for example. So it's from there you may want to research whether they, they have the same uh, uh, specificity and all those ones. You can also use uh, that to get opinion, beliefs, and point of view, whether controversial or not. Some imagine some controversial people have ideas, but you may want to crystallize the kind of, and make sure you put them in a way that gives, collects your own idea in presentation. Um, you collect information too, like in clinical impressions of, uh, or narration of incidents. Uh, in the health sciences, you want to say specifically how some of the maybe uh, specific symptoms of a particular uh, disease 
uh, manifested by a, a particular patient mm -hmm. or a particular somebody is bringing out a client is showing a particular condition in certain things and it helps uh, sometimes this part the the last two may be subjective but they still add there are usually uh two sources major sources of information that you use in literature review primary sources and secondary sources you need to really um differentiate that the primary source are data written or reported by you or by your group or by the person that actually gathered those are primary ones like when you are awarded a grant which i hope that most of you here after this uh, workshop will begin to tell us the good news about uh, winning grants. Uh, so the, the, the person, when you go to the field and collect, that's a primary source. You are the one that collected. But there are secondary sources, like the one you get from uh, uh, the, the one. You are not the one re that reported it. Somebody, more like a third person reported. You are not the one that um, said, that uh, collected the data. You have examples like going to the website to collect, uh, you see a journal written by another person, but you are interested in uh, ENT issues. So you want to see what are the issues about a particular specific thing, new ways of uh, doing surgery or improving uh, hearing for people that are. So those are secondary sources. And uh, they are also very important because they give us basis for uh, the literature we want to present. As you also see our literature, how are they, in what formats are they available? Of course, journals. For most of us uh, attending this uh, workshop, the, the formats that we really appreciate for most part are journal uh, uh, formats in the form available in journals especially repeatable journals. And people want to see if they, they, why do we call them repeatable? Because if they are repeatable, they are globally visible and is a journal that maybe is trusted. So you can get that. You can get from books, technical reports, thesis and dissertations. Uh, for most part, uh, people from around here, uh, those some of the thesis, if they are not published in a wider place, people don't get to pick uh get them but we also take them as part of uh li where literature can be available because um they we call them sometimes gray literature why are they gray because they are not as visible as the ones that are published in books that are widely read and journals of course your conference pro proceedings government circular computer database those ones uh, even your general <clears throat> Sometimes in scientific world, we don't really uh, want to take uh, things from social media, mass media uh, per se, but we can refer to them, especially the repeatable world, because they suffer from um, uh, some of them uh, may be spurious, some may be uh, something that uh, out of this world may be misleading. Sometimes in writing real research, we want to avoid that. Uh, we will talk about the nature of uh, literature review. A literature review must have depth and breadth. Uh, in terms of depth, this refers to the number and quality of the sources of information examined by the researcher. Remember, I just mentioned like social media, mass media. Sometimes you get that. You know, what we are talking about, the quality now differentiates uh, what the and again the number so that's the depth if you get uh, people who want to for instance say that they got information about health related issues from who the un arm of uh, health major health related issues than they get from uh, a book uh, by a, a, an unknown person uh, giving advice on health Another is the breadth is determined by the number of the different sources examined. You can see the difference, you see the depth and the breadth. 
the number and quality and the number of different sources is brought in all. It should be broad enough for the researcher to be knowledgeable about the research problem and narrow it enough to include predominantly relevant sources. We can say, for instance, uh, diarrhea. If you click, for instance, you want to do a search on diarrhea, you may get millions upon millions of literature related, but you may be working on an aspect of diarrhea. You know, you may be looking at uh, preventing diarrhea. In that case, there are several ways of preventing. If your focus is on environmental uh, way of preventing diarrhea, you may want to narrow on such environmental parts of like provision of water, hand washing, some of these hygiene related ones. How do we conduct a review? That's the critical thing that people have been asking question. How do we? Um, it has to be uh, systematic, it, it must be. And there are critical five steps. Establish one or two questions that would drive your review on the substance or the issue and the method. Another step is examine a representative sample of studies from the full population, population of available studies. You know, you know, you know, you narrow your question or your narrow your. So sometimes if we are using the website to search for literature, you what you do first is that you do a broad search. You throw in a broad, very broad search term. And later you begin to uh, narrow down or redefine your uh, search terms to be more specific to the questions or the area of research that you're interested in. Like the example I gave about the diarrhea and narrowing that even in the uh, environmental aspects, you may have maybe working on strictly the hygiene aspect. You may be working on only provision of water and so on. Uh, you need to record the study findings and characteristics. Who was sampled? What measures did they use? You can just, you know, how many people did they group? You know, you may find a study that is example in a, a journal that only did uh, worked on another, the same area worked on 1,000 or 2,000 uh, sample or had a 2,000 sample size. You see that you need to get those things down to, to get and to pro, provide it in a way that your own area, the area you're trying, the research proposal you're trying to put forward will be clearer to the people you want to uh, present it to. Uh, you know, you want to know what background, what are the differences, what do they do? Those are the things you need to record to enable you. You can't say for that 1,000 that is the same as 100, unless you are very sure that they use the similar methods, which must be recorded. Another one is analyze the recorded data in terms of strengths and weaknesses of the study. I just mentioned an example of the uh, example sample size. You can, you see that the one with the higher sample size may have better precision than that of the one with the lower sample size. And you need to now interpret your analysis. In doing so, you need to consider focus of your previous research, uh, identify areas that have been thoroughly investigated versus those that need additional work. That's where you are trying to focus. Try to predict how your work will fit into an accumulating knowledge base. You know what we are saying. Remember, what is your selling point is the people have been selling the same products but what new are you adding? What are the new points you are trying to add to brand your work? So you need to do your literature in such a way that it gets that. Uh, 
you can use uh, this for your work or future research. That's what how to conduct. Uh, reading of sources. When you get a literature, what you need to do is that there are a, uh, the initial phase, the preliminary phase, and then the critical review. You know, you get, sometimes you just do it by title. It could be just the preliminary stage may be as simple as uh, uh, browsing through titles to see those ones that contain uh, the uh, specific search time you or the terms you are really, you are interested in. That's why in presenting your research proposal, your title or your topic must be quite compelling, attractive, and focus on the work you want to do. So if I'm, for instance, still using diarrhea as an example, I'll be looking at diarrhea, diarrhea-related matters. And if I narrow my search to environmental things, I will now narrow my search terms to, to fit the environmental ones. And, then that's like scanning through. It could just be, ah, let me scan through. Let me scan through what method, or did they list the kind of method, just scanning through. And then you do the critical review because in critical review now, you are going beyond just scanning. You now say, okay, oh, uh, literature A, literature B, they all talked about uh, the diarrhea and hygiene. Uh, you know, we want to now see how many people in doing, which method did they even apply? Is it hand rub or, uh, hand washing, did they use water, did they provide water? That's where you begin to see uh, how complete, consistent, how the strengths and weaknesses of, and the relationship to your own projects or your own research area. There are things, uh, you know, of reviewing the literature. You know, there are places you go to get uh internet and um they have really helped to make um uh literature review easier because you have places you can easily in the click of a button you you have several there are you know library interlibrary loan services you know you can go database of books journals you have several there are indexes people have compilation of reference materials that provide information on books and periodicals in various fields of study. Uh, example, international nursing, you have in Indes Medicus, and you also have in your own specific field. Irrespective of your field, you will find a compilation of where you can access uh, information regarding your group. So it's not restrictive in any way. Uh, you can also look at abstracts you know, or from different, you know, uh, brief summaries of articles, dissertations, abstract, international ones of conferences and proceedings, uh, conference proceedings. You can also have a, a computer assisted literature searches. Many of these are online, of course, via CD-ROM, you can easily run those ones. And most schools, most institutions, they have uh, ways, especially, um, the academia directly, not um, you have where your, your main library. Remember, I'm just talking about there are physical holding and electronic holding. And I've spoken about electronic holding. There are places, libraries, people go to, and also search. You see physical books, you reach them. That's the physical holding. And you go to sections in well organized libraries. You see, go to the area. If you are working on uh, peace and security, you head to the section that addresses peace and security, and you begin to see books. You may want to, first of all, look at how current that book is. You can be talking about peace and security in the modern time, and you are looking at, uh, you know, unless you are looking at, you are looking at the book of uh, 1948. The, the uh, uh, application of uh, security issues there uh, and now may not be the same, but although you may learn something, so that's why we are always looking at current ones because we want to look at the contemporary ways things are applied. Of course, I've talked about local libraries, uh, the physical holding, and uh, even list of references. For journal articles, for most people, you may get, you know, you can browse through the list of references and get more 
information, you know, oh, you read, this is where these people use. You now recall, you want to read those ones. They could be also where you could go and get review. How do you record your, the way you have done uh, your literature review? It's not enough to say you have gone to read and all those, you must. And this is very critical. Why you need to note it. Funders, uh, they have zero tolerance for plagiarism. Our academic dishonesty at that point is a very serious crime. And for all of us here, we need to have that at the back of our mind, that integrity should be our watch word. And it, where there's dishonesty, and it, people don't know, they sometimes they are ignorant, especially in literature review, and in recording the references, the sources of those literature you have reviewed. And you need to pay attention. And good thing, there are now um, softwares that help you arrange your 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 references and recording them systematically so that you are not you don't fall short of doing you know falling uh, being accused of uh, plagiarizing somebody's work without acknowledging the sources you have used in doing the literature and in doing so it's important that you the author's name that is depending on the number depending on the format you want to, in terms of referencing. There are different uh, referencing style. We are not talking about this place, but you need to know it be a bit different. For some, they may follow, but this must be in recording the references or the sources you have used in uh, getting, reviewing your literature. One, be written. Uh, example is a Mot, my I, another person, another person, or if I'm the only one that wrote, you must, which year did I publish the article? You must say the date. Date is important. Date is important in several ways because it gives, shows us how current that book is, the year, the maturity. Name of the journal is important. And of course, the volume, the number of the journal, place of publication, if it's a book, pages, those critical things that must you must use to identify a particular uh, a reference is important. This one is more like still uh, going back to what we have finished. You know, I have said all those ones. You must look at them. Now, writing the review. You must report on the portions directly related to the problem and purpose of your study. It's not just uh, getting all the things and writing. No, you, if, for example, still staying on the diarrhea, environmental factor thing. You must stay on that. You, you don't go and pick even those ones that are not uh, related, social ones and put. It will not make sense. Review should represent a thoughtful analysis and syn synthesis of the literature and not just a collection of quotes and conclusions. That's why most times people don't like putting quotes so much. It's you all understand. Remember at the beginning we said understanding and then making a conclusion related to what you want to do. You should start with an introduction stating sources consulted, consulted the amount of work that is in existence. You know, by the time you say so many people have done this. The body should consist of a critique of existing work. Like we have said almost all this. You know, use direct quotes only to emphasize central issues. They should not be too long used out of context. It's not enough that you put that they will say you have not plagiarized. No, it must be used. It mustn't be used out of context. It shouldn't be long. We should be doing an, a, you know, a synthesized uh, understanding of the subject matter.
sorry for that. Uh, you know, this, is it logically organized? Professor Nja mentioned about your work being, it must be, you don't speak about uh, symptoms without mentioning them and you begin to talk about uh, prevention. You jump from prevention, you talk about uh, treatment, just not, it must be organized. What are the causes and theology you follow? Does it attempt to be sufficiently objective? Remember, you need to, when you are doing literature review, you need to um, uh, avoid being that, uh, that is being too subjective. Of course, if you want to mention about significance as part of the whole writing of a research proposal, you'll be looking at the, the significant answers the question, so what? How can results be used? Those, those are the things. So significant answers, so what? There's something before I will say the one. In recording your references or the sources, there are four C's that you must also maintain. The four C's, is it current? Is it correct? Is it complete? Is it consistent? So those are the four C that will help you in recording the references or the sources. And back to justification in a research proposal. It answers the question, why choose yours uh, and leave another person so? What are the reasons for undertaking the studies? Those are the question, justification. You know, is it very important, how many people? So in summary and conclusion, literature review is a critical component of research process and must be given due attention. In fact, it gives the main meat of your research proposal. If it's not well done, if it's not, if, if it's sloppy, you are not going to, if it's not coherent, it's not clear. When we are talking about coherence of uh, a particular research proposal, it is embedded in literature review, which could be seen in the introduction or the background issue. So don't ever over, you know, try to overlook any aspects of uh, doing uh, literature review in particular in doing uh, setting up or developing your research project. I want to thank you for listening and I hope to get questions. And Oh, that was another lovely one from Professor Regina Ejemot Wadiaro. Hmm. I wish you could all clap. Unfortunately, this is a webinar and we cannot unmute everyone at the same time because this is gonna this was going to be some superb round of applause. But nevertheless, um I would let this time around, I'll let the participants who want to ask questions to talk so that you can have a feel of your audience okay and then you get to hear from them personally so yeah i'm coming to the participant list now and i'm looking for hands that are up so if you have questions please raise your hands and you're allowed to talk kindly keep your question really simple so that um professor regina can answer and we can take as many as if we can take up to 10 persons that would be awesome don't you think so all right so, um, Abana Clement, I can see your hand. So please go ahead with your question. Unmute yourself and talk. Hello. Hello. Yeah, we can hear you, Avan. Please go ahead. Oh, network is really, really poor now. Uh, hello. Yeah, um, Abana, we can hear you. Can you ask your question? Okay. Thank you for having me. My question is, under literature review, uh, first and foremost, I want to really appreciate Prof, the presenter. I really enjoy your presentation. Thank you, ma'am. Thank you, ma'am. Thank you. So my question Thank is, you. in literature review, Prof really feel so much about it. And where I have a little challenge that I would like to know is uh, in this grant proposal, uh, which you spoke about, in writing a literature review, let me use the area of uh, education, the writing to establish a school or to solve a problem in an education 
education. And in this uh, research proposal, does it actually require that you must dwell in your own local or the problem you are trying to solve, or you have to relate with other uh, issues that are pertained to it? I don't know if I'm understood. Yes. Can I, can you uh, mute, your, mute your thing so I can take on? Can you hear me? Yes, uh, the question uh, Abana Clement asks is, for example, if uh, he's writing in terms of research proposal on setting up uh, education, an institution or something. Uh, uh, Clement, yes, he still applies. The principles I've just talked about in conducting literature review uh, applies. So you want to convince somebody to support you to, to maybe establish an education. Uh, you, you need to ask why, part of what you'll be asking, why is education important? Why do you want to sell the idea that you want to establish a school? And in doing so, you now go to literature worldwide. It's not globally. You are looking, you must first, in writing your literature, you must give the global uh, feel of the area you want to. What is it globally? And then you begin to narrow down to the national, to probably regional, down to a, maybe a specific community. You'll be giving examples why you feel education is important. And you give example why these people don't have that access. Why is it important that they must have access? What will education do to you? So those are things you must. And you are not going to, as you are reading, you now say somebody that quoted the importance of education that is not even in Nigeria, maybe in Pakistan, in anywhere that the person is. So you see that that's uh, is still, you must do what I said in conducting the literature. You just don't wake up and you look at the current thing. How do I go about setting up a school? You must see, oh, how did they set up a school? For instance, in Nigeria, you don't wake up and start a school. You must first apply to Ministry of Education. They will now, their team will come and look at what you have, facilities. There are several things. You just don't start. For instance, setting up a university, private, or even state, there are procedures. So those things you need to know, whether how the methods, whether you want to change a new method, whether you say that that will delay more, those will be the argument, depending on your focus. That's how your literature. In, in all, what I've just said uh, in this uh, uh, lecture, this particular topic I've just said, will apply. So it doesn't matter which area you are doing, you must do. It must be systematic. You must be presenting your issues coherently and clearly. All right. And Tonga, EP, I can see your hand up too. Please go ahead with a question. Tonga, are you there? Yeah, I'm here. Can you hear me? Yes, I can. Okay, thank you for having me. My question is, uh, in, in doing literature review, yes, uh, where you have uh, more than one variable, maybe a dependent and an independent variable in the title and in the issues you are considering to review, where is it more appropriate to start from? Is it from the dependent variable, the independent, or the independent variable linking the dependent in the literature review? Oh, thank you, uh, Mr. E.P. for this question, it's brilliant. But I want to take it on a general, there may be, uh, we may not have a, a, um, that fast and hard in terms of dependent and what you need to do in doing your literature is to set your title or your topic and identify the clearly what you said, the independent and dependent uh, uh, variables in that. What you need to, if you want to start, sometimes you may combine them as you are trying to uh, make a case for the research place you are doing. So it may not be a standalone that you want to do literature. You say, let me first finish the dependable, uh, dependent 
uh, ones, and then independent variables are handled. Sometimes they may, the major thing is that you are coming from a coherent, a sequential. If you are talking about um, uh, diarrhea, like I said, you, you know, uh, you may want to finish the presentation when you are talking about age affecting um, the uh, immunity in terms of getting diarrhea. Uh, let me use the one I'm familiar with. You may not, you know, feel like uh, age at that stage. Age, for instance, and remember that in some topic, what is dependent may not be dependent in the other one. Independent may not variable may not be. So it depends on how uh, uh, the people have the previous people have used their own. So you need to crystallize what uh, they have said in their literature to compare with what you want to get. So it must follow a sequence of finishing independent variable, for instance, before you join. Uh, the, the good phrase, catch phrase will be identify your variables, both independent and all those, ones, and make sure you comprehensively deal, that is uh, review related matters concerning that. Okay. So Joy Okoye, can you proceed with a question? Joy, are you there? Hello. Hello. Good afternoon, Prof. And um, thank you for the wonderful presentation, Ma. Thank you. My question is uh, about uh, one having limited uh, literature review for writing the proposal. So uh, yes. using uh, is using primary source sufficient for a grant writing proposal, Ma? Thank you, Joy. Um, that that wouldn't be sufficient. Uh, we were trying to tell you the sources of uh, where you can get information, some primary, some uh, secondary, and none can be that uh, sufficient in presenting an angle to, uh, to pre presenting your own case or making a case for your research. Please, can you admit uh, uh, Joy? <laughs> Are you hearing me, Joy? Yes, ma'am. Yes. So it must be a combination. Uh, remember that in getting uh, the full picture of a particular issue or problem, it's not the one you collected yourself that can give you, it will be limited. So it's usually a, a full dose of a combination of primary and secondary that will make for reach. And most times the secondary gives you the basis because remember the science of uh, research or the, is building on previous existing. That's why you are trying you can make a case that it was like this. It was at level level one. And now your point, you are trying to see if you can bring it to level three or level two. Those are the ways that I can give you. So the secondary ones will give you what was it? More like what was the baseline uh, way? What was the situational point before you want to try to intervene or to want to apply a particular method? So it's usually a, um, a combination, a full dose of combination of uh, both primary and secondary. Thank you. Thank you. Okay, Scholastica Amadi, um, please go ahead with your question. Hello. 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 Hello, Scholastica. Yeah, thank you so much, Prof, for this insightful discourse. You've really made my day. Thank you so, so much. Thank you. Uh, but my, uh, my question is, um, in writing this grant proposal, is it only empirical literature that has to be reviewed? Does one have to really think of other uh, types of literature, whether the conceptual or any other one? Is it only empirical literature that has to be reviewed? That's my question. No. Thank you. No, thank you. Thank you for the beautiful question. You know, we uh, we didn't get to because of time. To it's not only empirical, conceptual ones. You have already stated that it's not theoretical. It's also because sometimes we want to get the theory that is behind the practice we want to uh, achieve. Are you getting what I mean? So yes. empirical, theoretical, and are very important in giving 
your, in fact, for us in my own department, public health uh, department, University of Calabar here, we, we, we insist that the, the four, usually the empirical, theoretical, and all those ones must appear in your, in your this thing. even the framework, conceptual framework for even the work, uh, the basis for it is also part of your literature review. Okay, it's not only empirical, no, empirical cannot. You need to have the theory behind that that you want to now apply. So conceptual wants to come, the empirical one. But why we why we want more of empirical ones is that to show that somebody has done something you want, you can have basis for comparison. So we like uh, if the models of uh, empirical ones. Okay. Uh, Thank Mr. you. Thank you. Hello. I can't hear you very well. Okay, so I believe uh, Musa is getting his audio sorted out. In the meantime, can we hear from Okan Lade Lawal Adebola? Please proceed with your question. Uh, well done, Prof. Thank, thank you. The, thank you for the delay. I have just uh, two questions, ma. I'm called, I'm from a Federal University of Agriculture, Abeokuta, in Ogun State. Okay. Yeah. Well. So my first question is: uh, Is Wikipedia an acceptable source of information when conducting literature review? Mm -hmm. I hope you got the question, man. I got the first one, yes, I'll answer it. The second one is that uh, sometimes you get information on topic of research from individual or some non-educational agencies from blogs. In their blogs, you get it. I'm also asking, is such blogs or are such blogs also acceptable or not as source of a uh, referencing when it comes to literature review. Thank you, ma. Thank you, Lawa Debole. Thank you, your questions are quite valid and uh, people find it difficult to uh, accept. Wikipedia, uh, just like I said, uh, you know, when I was presenting the paper, I said social media, because people is not uh, a, a trusted, uh, not all their statement, not that they don't, they can't give you a clue that you can use. Remember that some Wikipedia, they give concrete references that you can easily go and uh, verify yourself or read uh, in more detail from. So for most part, for most institutions, like my own department here, we don't accept Wikipedia as a form of um, uh, reference that you can put because of that that lack of a trust, entire trust in the sources of the opinion or whatever the presentation is. But that does not mean that you cannot get very good ideas. You can get and begin to. Sometimes they even have the concrete, the one that they reference. So it doesn't mean that they are entirely useless. They are also source of information to build on your research because remember that uh, where you there are places that are not short you can tease what and begin to weigh it with more uh, the ones that we have more consent their own idea of how a particular uh, medicine worked for them traditionally and other uh, maybe something to be verified or something evaluation so we don't discard them entirely, but we don't take them when we mean, uh, when we are doing uh, concrete research, because you need to quote, you need to say, who is Wikipedia? Who said such? 
if you don't put Wikipedia, you are likely to run into trouble. That's why in some institutions, they put a boundary about which ones they want to take. Another institution may say that it's good for them. If it's good for them, we are okay. But that does not mean that information you get from Wikipedia are lies or they are uh, no useless, they are not relevant. No, you can use that to be idea. Sometimes it's where you can start with so that you see opinions and all those. And the second one is that research ideas, research burden could come from even uh, happenings around you. So you could pick from any social site and say, ah, somebody did something that works like this. Somebody said this. You can use that now to build your own idea and begin to now do literature on it. I hope I've answered you, Deborah. Is, is, is clearly answered, Ma. But the second one, you've not touched it on blogs. It on what? Blog, blogs. blogs. Yes. I remember that, of course, the name blogs are generally uh, somebody's opinion of a particular thing. And I, I, the same way, information you get from anywhere could, could be used. It depends on how you use it or how you apply it. So it's okay. not that you've got, and that we also, like uh, Wikipedia, we can't trust some uh, particular blog unless okay. the person is writing the blog on a, a, a reputable place if you are writing somebody that is for instance the who uh, secretary is the writing uh, writing a book based on this people want to look at that particular blog because it's coming from an organization that is reputable in terms of health uh, thank you ma I thank you ma. question is answered Okay, so um, it's two o'clock and um, we still have a lot of hands up, Ma, and you must be really tired. Well, let's just say one last person, just one last person, okay? And that is it for today. So Ayadi Gibe, please, can you go ahead with your question? Please keep it brief, just one question. Hello, good day, Ma. Good day. Man. Thank you so much for the knowledge, man. Thank you. My question is, do we have a standardized format for literature review? That is the unit that makes up literature review. Because there are some, some works, you will see issues like theoretical framework, conceptual, empirical. Do we have a standardized unit that makes up literature review in grant writing? Yeah. Okay. Ayadibe, that's a very brilliant one. And I think it's a place where all of us as a participant and facilitator, we may need to see if we can do work that will give us uh, a standardized way of judging a, a literature review. But for now, the current uh, status quo is that there's no standardized way. But what we say in literature is that it should have good depth and good breadth to cover what you want to do. Remember in the presentation, we said what it means to have depth and what it means to have breadth. And I, somebody also asked the question about, uh, do you only uh, include only empirical? No, if you, you only include the empirical aspect, you may be losing so much on the getting information about the theoretical and the conceptual part. So I would say is, is to follow that you must include, make it that it must include all the aspect, the three aspects to make it uh, presentable. And remember for some research, uh, um, proposals or grant writing or grant proposal, you, you don't have long space for uh, writing. Some are limited to three pages only, some even two pages. So you must be concise enough to put important things related to your work. Remember in the other previous where I said about branding, know what they want, go for what they want, sell your product in the best way that the buyer will buy. 
So that should be the word word in presenting you. And remember, is in conducting your literature review, is what has been done before. They, they are unpacking. And if you take mine, you will get better in this, this, this satisfaction in this, this, this. So I'm not sure, but it will be a very beautiful way to end this thing that we have a, a research proposal we can pursue, <laughs> getting standard way of uh, uh, doing literature review. Thank you very much. Thank you. Okay, thank you so much Ma, for this insightful session again. Okay, and thank you everyone for staying put. Please, we would uh, endeavor to close earlier tomorrow. We apologize for the features we had today. You know how it can be for, oh, sorry, let me off the recording.